This video is about how to combine one or more tables using joins in dplyr. And the idea behind joins is that they combine two tables using one or more columns that have the same information in them across the tables. To look at this, let's start by loading the data from all three tables uh, from the portal data set. We'll start by loading dplyr, since that's the package that we're going to use for joins. So we'll go ahead and say library parentheses dplyr and load that library. And then we want to load the three tables from the portal data set. And so that's the surveys table, which we'll call surveys, our assignment operator, and then read.csv to load a CSV file, and then in quotes the name of the CSV file, which in this case is surveys.csv. I'm going to hit control enter to run that, and then we'll do the same thing with the species table. Assignment operator read.csv quotes species.csv, and the same thing with the plots table. And so now that we've run all of those, we can look and see that we have three different tables available to join together. And like we talked about last time, uh, we can do those joins based on the plot ID column, which is also in the plots table, and the species ID column, which is also in the species table. So let's start by joining the surveys and the species table together. And we're going to use something called an inner join, which we do with the inner join function. So that's uh, inner underscore join parentheses. And this function takes three primary arguments. The first table that we want to join, the second table that we want to join, and then the column or columns that we're going to use to join those two tables together. And so in this case, we're going to start with the surveys table. That's one of the things that we want to join together. The other table we want to join is the species table. And then this third argument we write by saying by is equal to. So what are we joining them by? What field are we joining them on? What column are we using? And in this case, that column is species ID. And so this means that it's the species ID column in both tables is how we want to connect the tables to one another. And it's important to note that the name of this column is in quotation marks. Uh, so this is an exception to the rule that when using dplyr, uh, we don't put column names in quotation marks. In this particular case, we need to, uh, and you'll get an error if you don't. And uh, before we run this, let's go ahead and store it uh, in a new variable. Uh, we'll just call it combined. And if we run this, we'll see that we get a new table combined over here. And if we click on it, we'll see that it looks like the surveys table at the beginning. We've got all of the columns from the surveys table. But if we scroll over to the left, we'll see that we also have three new columns. And those are the columns from the species table, genus, species, and taxa. And we can see that if we look at the species ID, for NL, we've got Neotoma albigula over here, NL, Neotoma albigula, and so on. And so what this join has done is that it's added the matching values for genus, species, and taxa to each row based on what that species ID is. So one way to think about this join is that it's added the relevant information from the species table to the surveys table. And this is something we often want to do for scientific data, 
And for scientific data, we can often think about having one sort of main central table, in this case, the surveys table, which is the actual sampling that's going on in the field, and then multiple supplementary tables that provide additional information, like taxonomic detail, uh, for samples or for information in that main table. One thing that's important to note about inner joins is that they keep information from both tables only when both tables have a matching value in the join column. And so if we look over here, we'll see that the surveys table actually has more rows than the combined table. And so in this join, anytime there's a null value in the species ID column in the surveys table, or a value that doesn't match something in the species table, those rows will get dropped. And here's a uh, visualization of what this join looks like. As the join happens, we only keep rows where the joining field matches between the two tables. Rows that do not have a match in the other table get dropped. There are other kinds of joins that behave differently. For example, a left join will keep all of the rows from the left or first table uh, that we enter as an argument, regardless of whether or not uh, they match on the joining field uh, in the right table. Uh, here's an illustration of what that looks like. We can see that we keep all of the rows in the left table, uh, but we drop any information from the right table that doesn't match uh, the left table based on the joining field. For our work, uh, this semester will mostly focus on inner joins, uh, but left joins, right joins, which do the opposite of left joins, and outer joins, which let you keep all rows, all information from both tables, uh, are useful and they can be good to know about. So that's the idea behind joins. They allow us to combine the information from two tables together based on a shared column, or in some cases columns, that provide the information for how to link the two together We'll focus on the function inner join, but there are also functions for left join, right join, and outer join. And all of these functions take the first table that we want to join, which is also known as the left table, the second table that we want to join, which is the right table, and then a by argument that provides the information on the shared column uh, for combining the tables together. La 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 la, la 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 la, hey hey hey, D plier.